Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Peacock Inside Tech, and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra gets a lot of hate in the media, mostly people saying that the camera doesn't live up to the hype. But honestly, I love this camera. It's one of my favorite to shoot on right now. And it's definitely not perfect, but I might have a couple tips and tricks that would help you get the best out of your camera on your S20 Ultra. Stay tuned. I'll be using the S20 Ultra in this video, but a lot of these tips can also be used for the whole S20 series. The S20 Ultra comes with a four camera setup on the back and consists of a 108 megapixel standard wide lens, a 12 megapixel ultra wide lens, a 48 megapixel telephoto lens, and a depth sensing lens. There's also a 40 megapixel selfie camera on the front. This first tip will help you organize the camera modes. The S20 Ultra comes with a ton of different shooting modes in the camera app. It can be overwhelming if you see all of these options at first, but luckily there's a way to customize the layout a bit. If you click on more, you'll see a little editing pencil in the bottom right corner, and it allows you to align the camera modes to your liking from left to right, and you can minimize the amount of modes shown by sticking them in the more section. The first thing that I do no matter what phone I take pictures with is turn on the 3x3 grid in the settings. Even though I don't always follow the rule of thirds, I just like having these lines to help compose a shot. It just helps me align everything evenly. Samsung has a feature called Scene Optimizer and it uses Bigsby, Samsung's virtual assistant, to try and analyze and guess the scene you're photographing to optimize the end result. And sometimes this works great and can make a sky a lot bluer and the colors pop a little more and make your picture ready for social media right away. But sometimes this is not what you want, so I normally keep this turned off since I like editing my photos myself anyway. And with it turned off, the shots come out more natural and sometimes looking even better to my eyes. Just tap on the little circle icon in the bottom right corner and it'll turn it off. You can also turn this off in the settings. The next tip is how to lock the focus and exposure in auto mode. This really comes in handy if you're trying to compose a shot but the autofocus and exposure keeps adjusting and hunting, changing before you can actually get your shot off. Just hold your finger on the subject that you want to focus on until it locks, and just use the little slider on the screen to adjust the exposure. With Samsung phones, I normally always bump down the exposure a bit because Galaxy phones are often overexposed, and this way you can preserve a lot of the details, and if the photo comes out a little too dark, you can always brighten it up a little bit in post. A feature that complements locking focus and exposure is the floating shutter button. This way you can adjust the autofocus and exposure and easily be able to tap the shutter button without a lot of finger gymnastics. These next couple of tips will help you if you're trying to catch some action shots or of objects that are moving like your kids or your pets. If you have a moving subject and you want to keep the focus locked onto it, Samsung has an auto tracking feature that you can turn on in the camera settings. And this allows you to touch on the subject that you want to photograph and the software tries its best to stay locked on the subject so you can continue to shoot pictures without having to keep touching to refocus on things. This works great if you have small kids or pets that don't want to sit still and wait for you to take a great photo. If you want to catch something in motion, you can use the burst mode feature to make sure you don't miss your shot. To use burst mode, all you have to do is touch and slide down on the shutter button and hold your finger there until the action shot is done. This mode captures a lot of pictures very quickly, and after you take them, you can go to your gallery and choose your favorites, save them separately, or you can also turn them into a GIF. Another handy feature is recording a video while in camera mode. All you have to do is hold down on the shutter button, and the S20 starts recording a video without you having to switch modes, and this can be really practical. You can also use this if you want to use the zoom lens to record video. Because in the video mode, you can only use the 10x zoom, but this way you can go all the way up to the 100 times zoom. Have you ever been in a situation where there's a lot going on, like at a party, and you can't figure out how to capture everything in a picture? Samsung has a new feature that can help you out, and it's called Single Shot. This feature captures a 10 second clip of video, and from this recording, it creates multiple pictures at different focal lengths, uses different filters like black and white, and it creates short GIFs and other short videos. This mode is pretty awesome to be honest, and it gives you the ability to be lazy and let the camera make something out of nothing. It's perfect for those times you can't just sit there and take your time for a nice shot. Live focus is Samsung's portrait mode, and it works really well with the default settings, but this is how you can get sharper and more realistic looking portrait photos. 
In the top right in live focus mode, there's a wand-like icon that controls the skin smoothness. I turned this all the way down because I'm not a fan of the skin smoothing. With this off, you see more details in the face, which can be a good or a bad thing. But if you do like this, you can also control the amount of skin smoothing by just sliding on this slider. The S20 comes with a bunch of cameras, but unlike a lot of other smartphones, it lacks a macro lens for taking shots of really close objects. But with this trick, you can get a similar end result. If you go to auto mode and tap on the aspect ratio button at the top, you'll be able to choose the 108 megapixel mode. And if you get close to an object, as close as the focus allows that is, you can snap a shot. And in this mode, you have so much resolution, you can crop in really far and still have an ultra sharp image. The S20 Ultra has been plagued with autofocus problems since its release, and I experience these problems sometimes as well, trying to focus on certain smaller objects. And here's a tip to get around that problem. If you're trying to focus on something, but it seems like the camera keeps missing the focus, just switch over to the pro mode and you can manually focus. This works really well, and there's also a green outline to indicate what is currently in focus. This way you can be sure that the right thing is in focus, and I use this when I'm trying to focus on smaller objects. One of the main upgrades to the S20 Ultra is the ability to zoom up to 100 times. Although the quality at 100 times isn't really usable, the zoom up to 30 times is really good. You can get even better results from the zoom lens if you use a tripod to keep the lens nice and still, because while zoomed in really far, the smallest movements can blur your image. Even just touching the shutter button can shake the phone enough to blur your photo at 30 times. A tip that helps me here is using Bixby, the virtual assistant. Just say, hi Bixby, take a picture. The assistant will capture a photo for you with the current settings you have open on the camera. Also, if the focus and exposure is locked. An alternative to this is also setting a timer. And when things start to get dark, Samsung's improved night mode called Bright Night this year works really well. If you have the scene optimizer on, it'll also detect when it gets dark and try to optimize the shot, but the dedicated bright night mode works a lot better. And you can get some really great shots in really low light. I did a night mode comparison against the Pixel 4 XL and the iPhone 11 Pro. I'll link that video right here. So I hope some of these tips were helpful and help you take some great shots with your S20 Ultra. In my opinion, this phone has a great camera and the flexibility is amazing. So like always, thanks for watching. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. A subscription would be even better. And I'll see you in the next video.